Welcome to the University of Florida College of Medicine ultrasound module. This is module number eight. Today we're going to be talking about musculoskeletal ultrasound. And we're going to be looking at the tendon of the long head of the biceps. Also, we're going to be looking at the supraspinatus muscle. We'll try to visualize some structures within the carpal tunnel and we'll be looking at structures uh, in the distal femur and at the patellar tendon. Big thanks to Dr. Daniel Herman from the Orthopedics and Rehabilitation Department. He was great in helping me put this module for the class. So the biceps uh, tendon, obviously the biceps has a re, uh, refresh, has two heads. One starts at the coracoid process. Uh, one other originates at the supraglenoid tubercule. They insert in the radius, at the radius tuberosity, and their action is to help in supination of the forearm and it helps with elbow flexion. This is an image from uh, Gray's Anatomy. And now as we look at the bone, we'll see a close-up there when you see the tubercles of the humerus and that groove where that tendon should be visualized. Uh, we'll use a linear transducer and it's very important to keep your patient in a correct anatomical position with the uh, forearm supinated. We'll do a transverse view near the deltoid and this is what we should be seeing. You see the tubercles of the humerus and the tendon beneath. Now we're seeing a dynamic image of the patient doing internal and external rotation of the arm. We'll continue the supraspinatus. You know, it's part of the rotator cuff. It inserts in the superior facet of the greater tuberosity of the humerus and initiates and assists the deltoid in abduction of the arm. It's from Gray's Anatomy. You have the supraspinatus. And this is a scapula with a fossa where it originates. We're going to be at the lateral border of the acromion with your uh, transducer. It's going to be kind of in a coronal position. We'll be able to see fibers from the deltoid and as you move along you'll see the acromion along with the hyperechoic humeral head and then you're going to have the muscle the supraspinatus and as your patient starts to abduct the arm you'll see the movement as the supraspinatus glides under the acromion and it disappears The carpal tunnel has 10 structures, four tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis, four of the profundus, one from the flexor pollicis longus, and the median nerve. You're going to be scanning in a transverse orientation over the wrist, and these are uh, the structures we're going to be looking for uh, within the wrist and the carpal tunnel. Laterally, you can see the radial artery with a Doppler flow. And uh, as you move medially, you'll see that characteristic honeycomb appearance. Uh, it is a nerve. All nerves look like that. That's a median nerve. And then you see the tendons within the carpal tunnel. We're going to now look at the patellar tendon. We'll be scanning in a sagittal orientation where the transducer placed longitudinally there. And on the left side of your screen are the superior portion of the patient, the patella, inferiorly the tibia, and all the fibers of the tendon. If we move to a transverse position near the distal femur, we'll be able to see uh, the trochlea of the femur, and you have a segment of the vastus medialis. Hyperechoically, you see the condyles of the femur, and then you see the articular cartilage. So thanks again. This is MSK Lab number eight.